Good morning, church. It is good to be with you in the house of the Lord today. And I noticed that there are a few holes in the congregation that I haven't seen. So we need to pray for those gaps in the pews. And uh, hopefully folks are away enjoying the sunshine and perhaps traveling this summer. And I fully understand that. We're going to take a couple weeks in August ourselves. But we do uh, greet you in the name of the Lord, and we're glad that you're here. There are announcements in the second sheet of the bulletin, and we just ask you to read through those things that pertain to you. I've been asked especially to emphasize the trustees meeting. If you're a trustee of this church, uh, please don't neglect that meeting. And we can make it virtual if you're out of town. That's an important one. Uh, also, a church picnic happening, and everyone is invited from both churches to this event. Uh, information is in there. A new ministry starting, Karen's Clothing Cupboard, uh, kind of a higher-end clothing cupboard where folks, uh, not really a cupboard, almost like a store where people can come in and uh, receive very, very nice uh, clothing that you can go on an interview for or whatever. Information from the Presbyterians is in here as well. Uh, retirement celebration, and you can look at that. Also, the flea market is coming up uh, Saturday with a rain date there. Um, I'd like to ask Shannon to come forward and share a little bit about the Vacation Bible School happening at our church. Morning. Um, um, my name is Shannon Majerus. In case you haven't met me yet, um, I'm going to be working in Christian education, or I am working in Christian education, I should say. Um, I'm just up here to sort of beg and plead for some help for Vacation Bible School. It's in August, August 21st. It's just an afternoon, one to three. Um, I'm just asking for faces to be here. Uh, we haven't advertised yet because I kind of just need to secure. Um, some volunteers so I know that we can handle a group of children. Uh, we're going to have music, games, science. I know I'm missing one thing. Crafts. Thank you. So, um, you know, you don't have to lead anything. You can just sort of be a helper. You could be a greeter. Um, you could help get, we're having popsicles with Pastor Jeff at the end. You could help get that ready for me. Um, I, I, I promise I will not overwork you. I just want fa our kids in our community to see faces um, and feel warm and welcome and want to come back to our church. So I have a sign-up sheet out on the bulletin board. Um, you can put specifically what you're willing to do. Maybe you're willing to help me beforehand. I, I will take whatever you want to give me. And um, so just sign your name and I'll reach out to you this week or next week and we can just see where you'll fit best for VBS. Um, my other plug is that um, Sunday school will be back to normal, normal classrooms in the fall. So if you've ever wanted to teach Sunday school or you just want to be a part of it in some way, please also reach out to me about that. Um, I promise it will not be an every Sunday commitment. I'd like to have a rotation of teachers. So again, the kids get to know more people in our congregation and you are not feeling the pressure of an every Sunday commitment. So I am flexible. I'm just willing to work with you in any way that you're willing to work with me. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. And I would remind you we have one more Sunday worshiping here this summer, and then we'll be worshiping together at the Presbyterian Church. So don't miss that fact, and please all come and join us there. Uh, beginning in August. Uh, other announcements are in your insert, and if you have joys or prayer concerns, please put them on the little prayer card, and they'll be brought forward for me to read uh, during the hymn. Now we have a special group with us, you may have noticed, the Brickyard Brass, and we certainly appreciate their ministry with us in worship today and throughout the year. And I'd like to ask our music director, David, to come and introduce uh, what's happening. There you are. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Good morning, all. We have special music this morning. Um, it's not quite heavy metal. It's, but it is metallic. Uh, after months of negotiation and haggling with agents and trying to find an open date, um, I'm delighted to announce that we have been able to engage the premier brass quintet of Horseheads, New York, the Brickyard Brass. Uh, they've been rehearsing here in the sanctuary on Tuesday evenings, most Tuesday evenings, and uh, I thought, well, it would be great to have them share their music in our worship service today. So, uh, prelude, offertory, and postlude, all by the Brickyard Brass. I'm looking forward to it. Good morning. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Children of the living God. God loves us with the love of a mother and a father. Children of the living God. Despite our failings, God continues to save us. Children of the living God. We are here to worship the God of love, justice, and grace. Amen. And continuing with the unison prayer, God of salvation, we are grateful for the gift of your love, a love that has no bounds, a love that keeps reaching out to us, calling us to you. We are more than your people. We are your beloved children. You reiterate throughout scripture your readiness to hear us when we pray to you. God, you are our father. God, you are our mother. God, you are our family. God, you care for us and love us in ways we cannot comprehend. 
Forgive us when we forget how much you love us. Forgive us for times we are unfaithful to you, times we fail to do as you've called. God, thank you for loving us in the most sacred and scandalous ways. You are God, and we trust that you journey with us in all things. The first hymn is number 662, Stand Up and Bless the Lord. You may be seated. As we continue to stand up for Christ and to praise God's holy name, we bring these praises and prayers, prayer needs before God. Let us continue to pray for Joan Pittman, Chuck Pittman, and Jake Brackett. Also, Carol Irway and Mary Campbell. Gloria Giles will have her main heart valve replaced Tuesday. Baby Ethan is improving. John and Geraldine Terry. Prayers. Prayers for Andy Gillette and family having major surgery at Cleveland Clinic on Tuesday. And for Bernita Oppenheim. A special happy birthday to John Harvey. Is John here? All right, happy birthday to you. God bless you. And there's, uh, I haven't been in the habit of honoring birthdays, but as superintendent in the past eight years, many churches do that, and they sing a song. Uh, we'll, we'll hold the song for after the service, because there's probably others who are celebrating birthdays this week, but we do give thanks to God for you and honor uh, this as a blessing. Let's come before the Lord in a time of silent prayer and remember all those things that we're anxious about, that we're concerned about, that we care about, and bring those also before the Lord.
Dear God, for all these needs that have been mentioned and the blessings as well, the God sightings in our midst, we give you thanks and praise that we have the privilege to come before you and acknowledge that you are a very present help in trouble. Be with us and those that we lift up now, those whose names were read from the pulpit and those that we carry in our hearts. We ask that you would remind us that we are people of hope that move forward always trusting in you and knowing that nothing in life or in death can ever separate us from the great love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so we bring these needs to you, but most of all, we bring ourselves, our hearts, our souls, our spirits, our bodies. And we ask you to make us into people of stronger faith so that no matter what the circumstance, we can trust you and trust you entirely. Be with us, be with our two churches, be with this community, and help us to be a great witness of hope of grace and of love. Be with us in the entire region as your churches seek to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Be with us in the state and in the nation that we may be people that honor you and that celebrate diversity in our midst. And we pray, as trite as it might sound, for world peace. We cannot make an impact on it except asking you for help and doing our part to be people that bring peace. May it be so, and all of the intentions of our heart be ratified as we pray once again the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Yesterday, my husband and I went to watch gliders launch and land at Harris Hill. It was fun to see. While watching, I thought about the trust the pilots had to have. They had to trust in the construction of their planes, the weather, and the person in charge, making sure it was safe for them to fly. They all lined up, and one by one, they were pulled by the tow plane and then let go to fly on their own. I don't know about their faith in God, and yet I believe that trust was there, too. The plane's construction must be strong, built to fly. A building needs to be built on solid ground and able to stand. We build our faith on the strong, solid promises of God. Each day we walk the path he has shown us. Sometimes our feet sink in sand when we forget who we are following. When this happens, God waits for us to get our footing and land safely like the gliders. Wake to the light of God's world and the path in front of you each day. Put one foot in front of the other and reach out to God. If you'll bow your heads, we'll say a prayer. Dear God, you are our rock and our compass. We look to you for guidance and comfort. When we lose our focus, adjust our sights to you. Bring peace to our world, using us to spread love to our neighbors wherever they may be. Amen. Thank you, Jan. And uh, speaking of encouraging others around the world for peace, would you join with me in the statement of faith of the Church of Canada? Uh, this has been in place for quite a while, and it's a blessing to be able to hear and recite the simplicity of this. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
thank you for sharing. That was beautiful. The Old Testament reading for today is found in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 8. And I'm reading from the NRSV. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. That uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The word of the Lord. And the New Testament reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like the living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't be nervous. I got this. I have to confess, I was doing fine knowing that we had played some pranks on the pulpit and the new pastor uh, repeatedly, and then uh, I became nonplussed when I noticed that there's a warning sign behind this pulpit. It's a warning plaque attached with four brass screws. Let me read it to you. Warning, before moving this platform, remove small access panel and unplug mic wire from floor jack. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so I guess I'll stay put. I have uh, this morning several reasons to be nervous. And one of them is that I couldn't get my printer to work, so I'll read my sermon off of the laptop this morning. Technical difficulties. But I don't have to tell you that because uh, the good thing is none of you are anxious today. The photographer for a national magazine was 
late for his appointment on the small uh, plane, and he was, uh, in a sense, uh, running out on the, on the, um, oh, yes, thank you, <laughs> the runway. <laughs> That's why it's called that. Running on the runway, trying to get into the plane, and he got into the plane, and he said, go, 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 we're going to miss uh, being able to see the smoke, see the forest fires that are happening, and this is very important to me. Let's go. And so the pilot fired up the engine and got going as soon as he could. Go to the north side of the forest fire, yelled the photographer, and make three low-level passes. The pilot, anxious and nervous, said, why do you want me to do that? Go closer to the fire? He said, because I'm the photographer. I'm going to take pictures. And the pilot looked over and said, you mean you're not the flight instructor? <laughs> <laughs> I like that uh, children's message about uh, the glider and uh, the faith that you must have in whoever has prepared the glider before you get in it. I like to have all the bases covered, don't you? And uh, I've never been in a glider. I've been in many airplanes, but not a glider. And so I'm going to try it uh, this summer. I'm going to get in a glider, but don't you know there will be several interviews taking place before I step up into that glider? Of those who have done it before, those who have prepped this particular plane, the lead plane and the glider itself, and the person who will be actually controlling the stick. Uh, they may have to submit a resume and several references. Have you ever heard someone say to you this? Don't worry. Just don't be so nervous. Paul said to the early church, don't be anxious about anything. How do you feel when someone says, don't be worried? Don't worry, don't be anxious. Oh, okay, I'll just flick a switch and I'll feel better, right? It doesn't quite work that way. Paul writing to the Philippian church from a prison cell, remember, uh, knew that he had much to be worried about and the early church had much to be worried about. And he, he says this, don't be anxious about anything. Rather, oh, there's an alternative. Rather, bring up all your requests to God. I love that. In prayers and petitions, along with giving thanks. The antidote for anxiety, friends, is prayer and thanksgiving. And he says in verse 7, Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds safe in Christ Jesus. From now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent, if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things. There's a, a modern trend, uh, a school of thought called mindfulness. And really what it's doing is saying you can control your thoughts by being intentional about them. It's direct your thoughts back to, as Christians, the promises of God. And we see this in today's readings, and we see it all the way through Scripture. And it's important for us, actually, to get those Scriptures to be a part of our memory bank so that we can rely on and we can call upon them in our times of need. And so we remember not just the phrase, don't be anxious about anything, and by the way, if we use that in the church when our brother or sister is nervous, it's not going to go very far if we leave out verse 7. We must put that in there, and we must encourage one another. Rather, let's pray about it. Bring up all our requests to God in prayers and petition, and also change our thinking so that we are thankful for many things. What are you thankful for? today. I thought it would be a good exercise if we got, spent a little time getting in touch with our anxieties. And so it's kind of a minor anxiety 
for me not being able to print my sermon, but I thought to myself, I can just read off of the laptop. There's always some other alternative. And if the laptop dies, the battery goes dead, whew, now that would make me nervous. But you know, there have been times when the sermon didn't work out, and at that moment, God inspired me and many other preachers caught unawares by the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide what it is God wants to say to the people. It's not a bad thing to rely on the Holy Spirit. In fact, it should be our comfort, our counsel, and our hope. But that was a minor thing, not having the sermon print out. That's okay. We got through it. Well, we got through it to this point in the sermon. I don't know what's going to happen from here on out. And you don't either. But I want you to think seriously for a moment about your three biggest worries, your three biggest anxieties. And if you want to write them down for yourself, it's not a bad idea to do that. Just take a moment on the back of the bulletin or somewhere and just write down. It's just between you and God. God, I'm worried about. One, two, three. Take a moment. Get in touch with. What are you the most worried about? It might be you have someone who's facing illness or surgery. It might be that you are very concerned about someone who's in the service and is in harm's way. You might be very worried about uh, the shootings that have been happening all over this country. You might be very anxious under the surface about world peace and whether we can in any way hold on to world peace. You might be worried about the economy and how it affects you and many other people. What are the three top things that you're anxious about? And listen again. Do not be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all your requests to God in prayers and petition with thanksgiving. I want you to write down next to those worries, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving. Because that is actually the antidote for worry and anxiety, and at its root, let's face it, fear. I have a recurring nightmare as a preacher of losing my sermon text, misplacing it on Sunday morning. I have many dreams over the years of, I get there, someone has moved my sermon from the pulpit, I can't find my Bible, this morning, in real time, I couldn't find my shoes. What's the worst that could happen? A barefoot preacher. <laughs> Scary to me, I don't know about to you. What's the worst that could happen? Listen to Jesus in Matthew 6.25, and I referred to this a week or two ago. This is the Sermon on the Mount. And after that, Matthew 6. Uh, 25, Jesus speaking, therefore, after the Sermon on the Mount, therefore, don't worry about your life. What you'll eat or what you'll drink or about your body, what you'll wear, isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life? Again, easy to say, hard to implement, but we have, uh, in a sense, a formula to overcome worry and anxiety. And it is, make your requests be made known to God. Prayers, petition, and thanksgiving. In the Psalms, and I'm going to be later encouraging us to read the psalms together throughout the month of August. I think uh, we'll read them on our own, uh, but we'll know with a schedule that we are reading them uh, in unison. Listen to Psalm 37.7. Be still before the Lord and wait for him. Don't get upset when someone gets ahead or someone invents evil schemes. I haven't talked about it yet, but part of what we're anxious about 
is someone doing harm to another person, whether in our neighborhood, in our family, or around the world. It makes us anxious. It makes us nervous. And in verse 8, let go of anger and leave rage behind. Don't get upset. It will only lead to evil. This is the common English version, so it's, it's played with a little bit, but it's more modern language. We are encouraged to not be nervous. And the ways that we can do it is to trust. But again, it's not a litmus test. If we're nervous, it doesn't mean we don't have enough faith. It just means we need to practice our faith a little bit more. I remember taking Koine Greek, which is the New Testament Greek language, when I was in seminary in my second year. And I decided, because so many people had talked about Koine Greek and what a difficult professor it is who teaches it, what a difficult thing, I said, I'm going to take it during the January term. It's three and a half weeks intensive, learning every day, and then I won't have time to forget what I've learned. Crazy idea. Don't do that. Why did I do that to myself? And so it was a very nervous, anxious group. And when we had our first test, that was a significant amount of our score. One of the students said, before we take our test, professor, will you pray for us to do well? He said, sure, I'll pray for you to do well, no problem. Dear Lord, he said, please bless us according to the amount we have studied, amen. <laughs> that was not what we wanted. We wanted a miracle. We wanted the gift of interpretation of tongues, Koine Greek tongues, to be specific. We wanted a funnel right from heaven into our brains to miraculously let us know how to answer the questions on this test. But the professor knew another verse in the Bible, study to show yourself approved. <laughs> there is something we can do. There's something we can do to overcome worry and fear and anxiety, and that is practice our faith in the Lord, trust in the Lord, and meditate upon his word. As I came in this morning, I saw a young woman who had her own Bible. And in that Bible, there were tabs marking each of the books of the Bible. And I congratulated her, and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but I congratulated her on reading the Bible so much. And she said, I need it. I need to know where these books are. Whatever that you need to use in order to get the word into you is going to be helpful. So whether it's tabs or whether it's a different kind of Bible that's easier for you to understand, whatever it is, we need to work to get the word into us. Words like the promises of Jesus, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. That's a verse that we can take and apply to our lives right now. Jesus said in John 14, don't let your hearts be troubled. They were worried, his disciples he was talking to, because he had said, I'm going into Jerusalem and I'll be put to death and on the third day I will rise again. All they heard was, I'm going into the dangerous place and they're going to kill me. That's what they interpreted. They didn't hear, you see, the good news that he would rise from the dead. They didn't assimilate it into their hearts. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Isn't that a great verse you can just pull right out of the scripture and apply to yourself? When you are at the most anxious, even worried about life and death itself, God is going to meet you there and Jesus is going to say to you, don't let your hearts be troubled. Why? Because you believe in God, believe also in me. I've been in a pastor support group for many years, actually decades, with this small group of men pastors, United Methodist pastors, and we've supported each other through raising children and many difficulties of life and challenges that we've faced and churches that we've served. And one brother of mine who is in this group, uh, healthier than really the rest of us, rode his bike often, uh, went running when he could, got up early like John Wesley and some of the 
the early um, champions of our faith got up at 4.30 every morning and prayed and walked and went to his office and got back in time home for his, to meet with his family over breakfast. Jeff Long, pastor of Farmington United Methodist Church for, I think, 24 years. At the age of 65, last year he retired. Some health issues, but certainly not heart. And then last Friday, he died, riding his bike of a massive heart attack. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know from moment to moment. And I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying uh, share my grief for a moment. But really what I want to share is that yesterday, uh, up in Victor Chilai area, somewhere up there, we went to his memorial service that was all praise and prayer. Praise of God for this life and praise of God for Jeff receiving the goodness and the grace of Jesus Christ when he was just 16 years old. And the testimonies and the stories about his hope and his faith in the Lord and how he affected other people without judging them and led many people to faith in Christ was powerful. And we went away from that service encouraged that no matter what, no matter what happens, especially the unexpected tragedy like this, it is not a tragedy. And his widow, Beth, who didn't expect to be a widow this soon, stood and testified that it's all about Jesus. We trust in God for eternal life. And so no matter what happens in this world, though it is difficult when we go through tragedy, we shall overcome because the Lord is with us. I don't know, and maybe this is a good thing, I don't know the Horseheads area and the folks well enough yet to actually say that this specific thing that you've been through in either congregation in your own life, uh, that you know God has helped you overcome. I don't know your stories well enough, but I do know this, that whatever your story is part of the human condition, that God is with you, and that Though we have sinned, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, in other words, being created to be with him forever, that still he has forgiven us, he has given us grace, he has included us in the family. And as Peter says, we are chosen, we are royalty, we are set aside for the purposes of God. Sometimes I feel like I'm swimming in a sea of worry. Do you ever feel like that? And that everywhere I go, there's free-floating anxiety. And it just seems difficult to overcome it. There was a time in my life when uh, life was very difficult in college days. And as I was studying late at night um, into this classroom, really, which wasn't locked, me and my friend were studying, uh, two or three in the morning, in walked a man uh, with a knife and a ski mask on and demanded our wallets. It happened so fast and so suddenly and took us by surprise that we quickly handed over our wallets. And I looked down and what I had been studying, I looked after he left and I had been studying uh, for an Old Testament class. Here's what I read once again in a new way. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Wow! Is that a coincidence or what? I call it a God incidence. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Now, this is the written word written through the prophet Isaiah to the people of Israel thousands and thousands of years ago, and somehow it took new life, jumped right off the page and into my heart. And I felt, if that's not confirmation that God is watching over me, I don't know what is. And it's not always that God is going to protect us from harm because last I checked, the mortality rate of human beings is still at 
minus Elijah. Okay, I'll give you that. And Jesus himself. But friends, we don't need to fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies at noonday. We don't need to live in anxiety and fear. We need to trust in the promises of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you, Jesus says. So I want to encourage you today, whether you're dealing with anxiety, worry, whether you're being treated for that medically, that's an important thing to get a handle on our anxiety level, or whether we as a group in the churches are experiencing decline, worry about the future and anxiety, God is with us, God will never leave us, and God will redeem us and bring us into his presence. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we are sometimes frustrated with the fact that we cannot get past our own worry. We not only forget, but we forget to practice the promises of the faith, the promises written in your word and the confirmation and affirmation of your Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts. But remind us that it is very simple to trust and that we can put practices into our daily life that help us in our time of need. Lord, be with us as churches. Be with us as a community. Be with us to make a difference right where we are and to give thanks to you in all things and to lift up our needs to you, our prayers and our petitions, so that your name would be honored, your name would be glorified for the sake of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Just a brief word on giving as the offering continues to be taken on your way in. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. And so give to the level of your cheerfulness. Give to the level of uh, your joy. And give as God has blessed you. And when we do this, then we are joyful and we continue to have God's churches provided for. And so we give thanks to God for the gift of giving. Dear Lord, be transformed in the giving, that in the living your name would be glorified and honored each and every day throughout the whole earth. In your name we pray. Amen.
Dear friends, go from this place not anxious, not worried, but praying and thankful in all that you do. For God is with you, and God will help you right early. Amen. Ooh. Mm-hmm.